Hello friends and welcome back to House of Props. As you can see, I have IG-12 and Grogu standing next to me. This project took me over four weeks to build and another to paint. It's made completely of EVA foam, some wood pieces, and some PVC. Since it's such a large build, I'm going to split it up into multiple videos for you over the next couple of weeks, just so you don't have to watch a huge video all at once. So this week I'm going to focus showing you how I built the head and how I incorporated some LED lights into it. Let's get started. Yes. Yes. Okay, so we can start with parts A and B cut out of 6mm foam, but before we attach, we want to take a rotary tool with a sanding drum and bevel the edges where A and B will be touching. Then the edge on part B can be glued to itself with contact cement. When aligning the edges, try to make sure that the outer surface is as smooth as possible, that way the cleanup stage will be a lot less work. Then part A can be glued into the top hole with contact cement and then the edges can be rounded off with a rotary tool. While I sand, I would appreciate it if you would click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And while you're at it, go ahead and click the notification bell so you can be notified when the next part of the IG build is released. Next, you want to heat the pieces with a heat gun and mold the piece so that the bottom edge of part B flares out a little bit at the bottom. Next, take part C and glue the darts together with contact cement, and then start to bend the piece by hand. This pre-bending will help us with aligning the AB unit. Then the edge of C can be glued to the other edge. Again, take care that the outer edge is as flush as possible. Now we can attach the AB unit to part C. We want AB to overhang the edge of C by about 3 millimeters. That's roughly about half the thickness of the foam. Then using a smooth sand bit on the Dremel, we can round off the overhanging edge a little. Now this piece is going to be detachable from the rest of IG's head, and to achieve this, we will use some of these small magnets. I want this bottom edge to sit as flat as possible to the pieces below it, so I carve out small little pockets where the, later on I can glue the magnets. Then using a pointed tip on my wood burner, I burned some of the texture design along the bottom edge of part C. The fumes from this can be harmful, so whenever you use a wood burner on foam, use a face mask and work in a place with good ventilation. This piece can now be set aside and we can get part D. To cut the holes for the lights, I'm using my sanding drum on the Dremel, but I have the drum hanging off the edge slightly. If you hold the tool perpendicular to the foam, you can cut out a nice clean circle. When all the light holes are cut out, the ends can be glued together. Typically when I'm working with foam, I will use contact cement unless I otherwise state that I'm using something like CA glue. Around the top edge, there are small holes for light to shine through as well. To make these, I use a small drill bit and just drill them out. Again, keep the tool perpendicular to the foam or you will carve holes that have angles and they may not let the light through as well. Then, on the inside of this, I'm gluing part E, which is Plastazote. Plastazote is great for working with LED lights because it behaves like EVA foam, but lets the light through while supplying a slight glow. To glue this in place, I use CA glue. A bead can be placed along one edge, and the foam can be put into place without needing a lot of attachment. Just on the two ends of part E should do it. You can see here how this plastazote allows the light through very nicely and gives a nice glow without having hot spots where the lights are. On the inside of this DE unit, we can glue part F, which will serve as a base for the LED light unit as well as give the head some inner support. Part G has a groove line indicated in the template. To cut this groove, take a hobby knife and angle it as you slice along this line. Don't push the knife all the way through the foam, only go about halfway deep. Then flip and cut beside what you just did. Then you should be able to just peel out a nice groove. Seal this groove onto itself with contact cement and close the ends of part G onto each other as well. Then this piece can be glued to the bottom of the DEF unit with some CA glue. Then 
Part H has a hole cut in the middle. This will later have a support pipe inserted through it, and the edges of Part H are rounded off on both the top and the bottom. This can then be glued to the bottom of the unit with a bead of CA glue around the edge, but you want Part H to stick out slightly. Next, attach the ends of Part I to each other with contact cement. The top of the cone, which is the larger opening, can be glued to the bottom of part H. Next, take a half inch triangular foam dowel and attach this to part I under the edge of part H that overhangs part I. If you don't want to buy one of these, that's cool. I have another video on my channel showing you how you can make these out of scrap pieces of format. When that was in place, I added a rounded tip to my wood burner and pressed the tip about an eighth of an inch into the triangular dowel and then made another pocket about a quarter of an inch beside the first and so on and so on until I made it all the way around. Parts J consist of multiple pieces. The template lists the quantities and the foam sizes needed to make each little piece. To make the small pieces, I used an eighth inch hole punch. It just made it a little easier and faster. The quarter inch circle can be glued between two hexagons and an eighth inch circle can be centered on top. These can then be glued to part D in the four positions that are indicated on the template with some CA glue. The edge on the circle of part K can be rounded over and the rectangular foam strip can be attached in a circle on top. Then it can be glued into place on part D with contact cement. Part L is made by wrapping three pieces of EVA foam around a wooden dowel. Then I took my rotary tool with a smooth sanding stone and bevel off the edges. Glue this to the 4mm foam circle and then it can be glued onto part D as well. With part M, only the top edge will get some contact cement on it. And then it is glued on the inside bottom edge of part H. So we have a little bit of an overlap happening that's about a half inch. I made part N by gluing together four pieces of 10 millimeter foam for the base shape and five pieces for the cone shape on top. The profile of this shape is included in the template. Then I took a half inch spade bit and drilled out a hole down through the center. This hole is for the support which will be added momentarily. Then it can be inserted so that its bottom edge is flush with the bottom edge of part M and then glue it into place. Part O, which is the neck, is made by stacking several circles of different diameters and foam sizes on top of each other and then cutting out the center with the spade bit. And the head will sit on top of this, but first take a sanding drum and carve out a small channel on the top 10 millimeter foam disc. Then the head can be glued into this groove. Next, part P is glued onto part M about two inches down from the top edge, and an X-Acto knife can be used to cut two lines going along the length of the piece, and then a heat gun can be used to make the lines open up and become more defined. For IG's lights, I'm using this LED strip that has a USB plug and comes with a remote. That way I can then operate without having to take the head apart each time. I'm going to mount a scrap circular piece of foam in the center and it's on this that I will wrap the LED strip. It just so happens that this scrap piece is just big enough to accommodate the entire strip. This strip has a sticky back to it so I remove the protective layer and begin sticking the lights onto the foam. It turns out it's not holding, so I attach the lights in a few spots with some CA glue. It will hold and it won't affect the lights or the wiring. With this scrap piece of foam, I can have the USB plug and wire hide out in the center and it won't block any of the light. Now this can be glued on part F in the center of parts D and E. Now, jumping back to the top of the head, I added a 6mm foam strip around the inside bottom edge of part C. You want to keep the bottom as flat as possible, and you can use a rotary tool if you need to even it out. Then using a small sanding tip, we can remove the divots for the magnets. The divots I made for the magnets earlier weren't in the correct position, but since I added that extra piece of 6mm foam around the inside of C, I was able to switch it up a little bit. 
To glue the magnets in place, I just used some CA glue. I was worried it wouldn't be durable enough, but it's been holding up so far. Then I added some 4mm foam to the inside, but left about half an inch hang past Part C's edge. This will stick down into the rest of the head and both keep the top of the head in place and hide any spot where light might try to leak through. Magnets can be added to the DE piece and the top part can then be placed right on top. Now the lights will always be accessible if you ever need to change batteries. I kept forgetting about the eyes, so I added them now. To make part Q, take two pieces of 3 8 inch dowel and glue one of the large 2 millimeter foam squares to each one so that a little bit of the dowel sticks out of each end. Carve a circle into the center of the 6 millimeter foam squares and glue the exposed dowel into the groove. Then take the piece that looks like the letter E and glue the square dowel pieces onto either end so that the square is flush with the top leaving a little bit of the bottom shape exposed. Then the small 2mm foam square can be glued in the center like so. And the small 6mm foam rectangles can be glued on the outer edges like this. And finally, the entire part Q can be glued onto the head. To power the lights, I'm using a AA battery pack that has a USB plug. This pack holds three AA batteries, which will be enough power for these lights. The lights can plug right into this pack and a quick test to make sure they work and they do which is great so i can leave the battery pack left on and use the remote to turn off the lights and then change the color or what have you now all i need is the remote and i don't need to lift the top of the head every time i want to adjust the lights For the head support, I'm using a 12 inch long piece of 3 quarter inch PVC pipe. This can be inserted into the holes we cut through the foam earlier. It should fit pretty snugly, but if you want, you could glue it in place. And there you have it, the first step in a life-size IG droid, IG-12's head, complete with changing LED lights. So here we have the head, it's got its removable dome and its LED lights inside. Magnets help it snap back into place. It's a about 18 to 20 inches tall and a little bit of the PVC sticks out so that's going to end up being our support when it gets attached to the rest of the body. I hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it with friends and family, subscribe to House of Props, and tune in for the next video where I will be building the chest section where Grogu yes. sits. And remember, if you are building any of my builds or using any of my templates, feel free and tag me at House of Props on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok because I would really like to see your fantastic work. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.